we adore you, Lord. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the earth has celebrated today in being free, Father God. But only you can give true freedom, Father God. We thank you for setting us free, Lord. Hallelujah. Because of your son, he came and shed his blood for us, Father God. And we are free, Lord. We thank you, hallelujah, free to praise you, free to worship you, free to honor you, free to live as you allow us to live in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We bless your name on today, Lord. We come before you with grateful hearts, Lord. We are humbled in your presence. We welcome you in this place today. We say, have your way, Father. Have your way with your people, Lord. Stir us up, Father God. Awaken our spirit within, Lord. And give us a mind, Father God, to receive you this morning. Let us receive your word. Let us receive you, Father God, in our mind and in our hearts, Lord. We bless you, Father God. And we thank you for all that are here this day. We thank you, Father God, for our leaders, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Terrence as he comes before us to give us the word today, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in him and through him, Father. We thank you for the fresh anointing on his life, Lord. The new word he's coming before us with, Father God. We thank you that he's a true man of God. He's your true and faithful servant. And he's obedient to your word and to your will, Father. We thank you. Thank you, Father God, and we bless him right now and say, no weapon formed shall prosper in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for his helpmate, Father God. We thank you for Lady Latrilla, Lord, her endurance, Father God, and the strength that you give her, Lord, to perform all that you have for her, Father God, that she will step through her assignments one by one in a victorious way, Father God, because it is you who gives her the strength, Lord. It is you who gives her the joy. It is you who gives her the peace, Father God, to accomplish everything that you set before her. We thank you for her life, Lord. We ask, Father God, that you cover them both, Father God, and keep them blessed, Father. Put a hedge of protection around all their lives, Father God, and their family lives as well, Lord. We thank you for them, Father God. We thank you for this service on today. We thank you for the praise team that will come before you and sing with the voices of the angels in the name of Jesus we thank you that we are here to have a good time in you father God that we are here to praise you to sing with you to dance with you father God to receive your word Lord to grow and be better that when we leave this place we will not be the same father God but we will be different in the name of Jesus Oh, we bless you, Father God. You are so worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord. We can bless you a thousand times and it still not be enough for all that you have done for us, Father God. When we look back over our lives, Lord, things seen and unseen, you have been always present, Father God. Whether we knew it or not, you were there, Lord, and we honor you. We bless you and we lift your name, Lord. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the sound ministry and the media, Lord, that everything will go forth in excellence, Father God, as you will have us to operate, Lord, that we have our minds and our focus set upon you, Lord. There will be no distractions in the name of Jesus, Father, for we look unto you, Father God. We look to the hills from where our help comes from. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We honor you in all that we do. We honor you in all that we say, Father God, because it is you who gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, Father God. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all, Father. It is not about us, Lord. It is not about us, Father God. But we do everything unto you, Lord. And we say hallelujah to your name. We bless you, Father God, for every breath that we take. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father God, with everything that we have. 
We bring it unto you, Father God. We thank you for the gifts and the talents that you have given us, Father God, that we are operating in them for your kingdom. Hallelujah. For your people, Father God, that we are moving in truth and in love to love you, Father God, to love our people and to find our purpose. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you are so awesome. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. Even in the trials and tribulations that will come, you are worthy to be praised, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. No matter the situation, Lord, no matter what's going on in the natural, you're still worthy to be praised, Lord. You're still worthy to be praised, Lord. Even when things don't go our way, Father God, even when the doors may seem shut, you are worthy. Thee, Father God, you are worthy, Father God. When man tells us no, Father God, we know you have a yes for us. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy, Father God. We bless your name, Lord. We say hallelujah, Father God, because we know that you are worthy, Lord. We honor you, Father God, in everything. Hallelujah, Lord. You, we honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Father God, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy through it all, Father God, you are worthy, you're with us every step of the way, Father God, you are worthy, you never leave nor forsake us, you are worthy, Father God, and you continue to do a work in us, Father God, until completion, hallelujah, we bless your name and we thank you, Father God, we thank you for this day, we honor you, Father God, because you hold the day so we can walk as uh, victorious victors, Father God. We can walk as conquerors through this day, Father God, because we put our trust in you. Hallelujah. We honor you, Father God, and all these things we bring before you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know that he is worthy? Hallelujah. He's been so faithful. He's been so good. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Come on. We're going to bless the name of our Lord, God, and Savior this day. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the freedom that you have given us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand, Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Forever he shall reign. Oh, he's alive. They crucified him. All right, come on, sing with me. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand, Jesus is alive. was slain he's alive forever he shall reign oh he's alive they crucified him but he rose in victory he's alive he's alive he's alive Bye. 
He's alive with all power in His hands. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive with all power in His hands. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power and authority, he conquered my enemies and he put them. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies. And he put them, Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive with all power in his hand. Jesus is With all power and authority, he conquered my enemies and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority, he conquered my enemies and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies, and he put them. Jesus rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies, and he put them. He rose with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies. And he put them, he rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive with all power in his hands. Jesus is I will bless the Lord forever and ever. I will bless the Lord forever, for He is good. Come on, repeat after me. I will bless the Lord forever and ever. I will bless the Lord. For he is good. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord. Perpetual praise. 
for he is good. I will bless the Lord forever and ever. I will bless the Lord forever for he is good. I will bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever and ever. I will. Bless the Lord forever, for He is good. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. With my hands, come on, with your hands, give them a clap, hallelujah. You can lift them high with your hands, with my hands. Hallelujah, Father, we bless you. With my dance, hallelujah, come on and dance for the Lord this morning, hallelujah. With my dance. With my voice, hallelujah, magnify him this morning. Worship his holy name, hallelujah. With my voice, hallelujah, we bless you, Lord. With all I am, with all I am, yes, Lord, with all that I am, oh God, with every breath, I will bless you. Praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. I will give the Lord perpetual praise. For He is good. Hallelujah. Give Him a praise. Father, we bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, God, not only do we give you praise, Father, but we give our lives to you, Father. Our lives belong to you, oh, God. And we bless you this morning. Be pleased with our lives, oh, God. I give myself away. I give myself away so you.
Because you sent your only begotten son. You sent Jesus that he, Father God, would die. And by the shedding of his blood, Lord God, we would be washed. We would be cleansed, Lord God. We would be brought back into righteousness, Lord God. So for that, we thank you this morning. So with that freedom, Lord God, from sin, with that freedom from the law of death, Lord God, we thank you this morning with all that we are. With all, Father God, that we are, we give you praise this morning. We say thank you, Father. We are grateful. We say thank you. Thank you, Father, for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you, Father, for sending him, Lord, to wash us, Lord God, as white as snow. We honor you and the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. We love you, Father. Hallelujah. We bless you in Jesus' name. the Lord. Good morning. Today is an opportunity for us to come together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and remember, um, Paul said, in remembrance of him, we do this. This is called communion. Some of us know it as uh, the Last Supper, and we normally particularly do it on the first Sunday of the month, but uh, we're not religious where we have to do it every first and first Sunday of the month, we do it. Paul said, do it as often as you like in remembrance of him. And so we, uh, we do it on the first Sunday just so that we don't forget about him. Um, but I uh, admonish each and every one of us that whenever, you know, you want to have communion with the Lord, take the time out and just have communion with him. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter uh, 26, Jesus comes with his disciples, and this is the setting where they began to have, uh, as I said, the Last Supper. And Jesus has a seat at the table with his disciples, rather so uh, the disciples have a seat at the table with Jesus. Um, and it's at that moment and at that time that Jesus began to explain to them that this is a new covenant that we're about to go into. And what we're about to do today is the beginning uh, of something brand new, something that you are not familiar with, something that has never been done before. And uh, some time ago in the scriptures, uh, Jesus told the disciples uh, uh, that if they didn't eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, that they were not a part of him and that they could not do the things that he did. And, and the Bible says that many of them walk with him no more because they didn't have a full understanding of what that meant to eat of his flesh and to drink of his blood. But at the, at the table, of communion. Jesus tried to explain even more in detail about what that meant in terms of 
us, all of us, are eating of his flesh. The Bible says that he took the bread and he broke the bread. And if you have elements today, I want you to collect your elements. And I'm speaking uh, directly or particularly to those that are out there and <clears throat> that are watching us, that are streaming. I know you may not have uh, uh, the particular uh, items that we have today, but I, I, I would ask that you just grab something, a piece of bread, a cracker, and, and you can sanctify that. You can sanctify that and grab some juice or water or something and sanctify it because it's about the symbol, uh, it's, it's about the symbol of what we're doing today. Uh, it's not this particular bread that saves us. It's not this particular bread that, that died for us. It's not this particular cup that I have and I hold in my hand that the, our remission of sins, our remission of sins has been uh, washed away. It's not this, uh, but it's what symbolizes what has been done. And so I want you to grab something today at home. Grab a cracker, a cup, a cookie, whatever it is, and I want you to sanctify it, set it apart from everything else. I want you to bless it. The Bible says that God, Jesus himself, took the bread. He, he talked to the disciples and said, this is my body that shall be broken for you. The disciples at that point, at that moment, they still had not understood yet that Christ's body, that Christ was going to be crucified. But he tried to, he tried to give them a, a foresight of what was about to happen. And so he, he, he broke the bread. He said, this is my body that will be broken for you. And if you have that, if you have it, I want you to break it. I want you to break it and, because it symbolizes it. And he said that he took it and he lifted it up to heaven. And he said he thanked the Father. Father, we thank you for this, which is a symbol of the body of Christ that was broken for us. It was beaten. It was ripped. God, it was uh, manipulated, God, beyond recognition. We thank you, Father, today that we're able to stand in your presence today and receive this. This symbol of our Lord and Savior's body that was broken and whipped and beaten for us. Jesus gave it to the disciples. He passed it along and he said, take ye, eat all of it. We eat all of it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then the Bible goes on. Jesus began to continue to speak to the disciples and he, the Bible said he lifted up a cup that that particular time wine was the, the beverage of the day and he <coughs> excuse me, he took the cup he took the cup and he lifted it up and he blessed it as well but what we come to know, what was in that cup again is not what's in the cup it's what symbolizes what's in this cup not many Hours after Jesus lifted up the cup, the Bible said he thanked the Father. Thank you, sir. The Bible says he, he thanked the Father. We've, we, we, we've heard songs years over years that said that if it wasn't for the blood, if it wasn't for the blood, it was the blood that saved us. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that washes our sins away. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that covers our sins. And the Bible says that our sins are forgiven and thrown into the sea of forgiveness to be remembered never again. The Bible says that Jesus Christ took the cup and he lifted up to the Father and he thanked the Father. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ which covers our sins. The blood of Jesus Christ, Father, that without it, there would be no remission of sin. God, we thank you, God, that it is the blood. <laughs> it's the blood of Jesus Christ, Father, that when we come to you, God, you don't see our sins, but you see the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, that because of the blood of Jesus, now we can come to the Father face to face and ask what we will, Father, and it shall be done according to your will. We thank you, Father, for this blood. We thank you for this symbol of, the, of, the, of Christ's blood that was shed for, for the whole entire world, God, for us, for me, for them. God, we thank you now. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Take you and drink all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in that same passage of Scripture that the disciples went off and they sang a song. They sang a song as they traveled on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And in that garden of Gethsemane, those of you that, that know your Bible, you know that it was in the garden that Christ began to pray. And he asked the disciples to stay awake and watch while he prayed. And in praying, he asked the Father that this cup that was about to take place would pass before him. Father God did not allow it to pass. I don't know what God whispered in Jesus' ear, but whatever it was, he came back and Jesus said, Father, nevertheless, not my will, <laughs> but thy will be done. He said that because he saw me. He saw you. He saw us dying. He saw us hell bound uh, without a free pass. We were hell bound. We were on our way to hell and, 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 and Satan thought he had the victory. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Christ had the victory. Though he, cried, though he died on the cross, the Bible said on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. Amen. God bless you all. We praise God. Continue to be with us as we continue with the rest of the service. I'll be back shortly. God bless you. Our announcements are next. My name is Liz Hill, and I'm here to welcome you and to give you this morning's announcements. First, I would like to welcome any first-time guests that we may have here with us today. Do we have any first-time guests? Yes, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us this morning, and I hope that you really enjoy the service. Uh, Bridge Church family, let's just welcome our guest again. Give her a big welcome this morning. Amen. Well, today the nation is celebrating 4th of July, celebrating their independence. But we know that as Christians, we don't celebrate our independence. We're celebrating our dependence on God. Amen. Because it's a day of freedom. And the word of God says that whom the son has set free is free indeed. There's no question about it. It's not an appearance of being free. We are free. And that's what we celebrate, not just on July the 4th, but we as Christians need to celebrate that every day. Just remember what Jesus did for us. We are free. Amen? Amen. And now for this morning's announcements. There will be a baptism immediately following service today. So all of those that are available, we'd like for you to stay for that. This is our first water baptism of the year. Amen. So we are so happy about that. And I would also like to announce that live and in-person corporate prayer takes place every first and third Saturday. Virtual prayer takes place every second and fourth Saturday. The time for both is 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We also have weekly virtual prayer every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. The Google link for all virtual prayer opportunities is listed on the event page of our church website. You just need to go to our website at the Bridge Church of Alabama and follow the prompts there on the events page. And also, there will be a church-wide fast on Monday, July the 12th. More information and details about that fast will be forthcoming. And before I sit down, I would like to say to everyone that our children's ministry is up and running. <laughs> Check out that area of ministry if you have children ages 8 to 12 years old. And also, before you leave the church today, stop by the lobby. Our children's ministry have prepared a treat for you. So just stop by and grab a treat. And just, we are, we are so appreciative of what they are doing. 
and we thank God for that. And so just be aware that the children's ministry is up and running. If you have kids ages 8 to 12, that's, it's a good place for them to be. Amen? And also this month, I would like to acknowledge our July birthday. We have any birthdays in here for July, the month of July? All right. Well, hello there. I am one of them. <laughs> yes, uh, my birthday is July 21st, and I will be 74 years young. Amen? Amen. And so we have um, one of our children ministry leaders has a birthday, Sister Debbie. We would like to uh, acknowledge her, as well as one of our praise team leaders, Kanithia. Their birthdays are in July, so... Happy birthday, July babies. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone, again. Uh, so glad that you all could join us here in person and on uh, our live uh, worship experience this morning. So glad that you are here. Uh, I have the um, opportunity to just encourage those uh, who would like to uh, give and sow into the kingdom of God. Uh, but before I, I go with the message, I just want to say, Pastor has really been... Uh, teaching us an eye-opening message on Sundays about tithing, excuse me, on Wednesday evenings uh, doing our midweek service about tithing and uh, just uh, giving an offering and sowing into the kingdom of God. If you have missed the last couple Sundays, I would just encourage you to go back and listen to those. Um, but as I go into my message, I, I the thing that most of us as we uh, go about, about our lives, when we think about God and we think about finances, we always think about God and him being our provider, Jehovah Jireh, right? That is uh, his, his name for, that, that is his name, uh, one of his many names, but we look, up, look at him to always be our provider. But also in that, uh, he has the responsibility of showing us that it is because of him, right? It is because of the, him giving us the power to, to obtain that wealth, that it is nothing that we can do in and of ourselves. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30. I want to start at verse uh, 8. We're going to read 8 and 9. And let's look at it in the, um, uh, let's try the New King James Version. Uh, New King James Version. Uh, yes. Um, Proverbs chapter 30. I'm sorry. Chapter 30, verses 8 and 9. There we go. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. So here the scripture is saying, okay, Lord, give me what is allotted to me. Give me my portion, okay? Lest you give me so much, right? You, you give me an abundance, to where I, and of course we know that um, God, Jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. But in this, what I want to point out in this scripture is that giving us an abundance to is so much that we are like, okay, you know, where is God in this? Who is God? We forget that the wealth came from him. It was him 
that allowed us even to obtain all of this increase, to, to, uh, to obtain this abundance. And then on the other side of that, acknowledging at the same time that he is our provider and Lord, give me what is allotted to me lest I go into and fall into poverty, which are the word lets us know that he said that he'll ne he has never seen the righteous uh, forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So it's so acknowledging the fact that even when we have just enough, it's still all coming from God. So whether we are in a, in a have an abundance or whether we have just enough, it is still our God. Amen. And all blessings flow from him. Amen. So if you would just prepare your giving this morning. And as you do that, I uh, just want to remind you of the ways that you can give. Um, you can go on to our website to give. Uh, you can also, if you're here in the building, there are some envelopes should be in front of you where you're able to uh, give your increase. And then you can also text to give to the ministry. But just know that here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, we know that this is good ground. We know that if you decide to sow here into this ministry, that your seed will go forward and do what God is calling us to do here as a body of believers to do here in this earth. Amen. Please prepare your, your giving. Father, uh, let's pray over our giving. Father God, we just come before you in Jesus' name, just thanking you for giving us the ability, giving us our jobs, giving us our sources uh, of increase that we may be able to bring them back to you, uh, that they will be declared holy and set aside for your use. We thank you that as we sow into your kingdom this morning, we're sowing by faith for whatever our need is in our lives, whether it be uh salvation, whether it be uh, peace, whether it be joy, may it be restoration, Lord God, of uh, uh, a relationship, whether it be, Father God, uh, finances, whatever it is, Lord, we thank you this morning. We believe that as we sow it into your kingdom, we are sowing it by faith. This seed, Father God, will be planted into good ground. It shall bring forth a harvest, Lord God, that we shall not have room enough to receive it, that we will have to, Lord God, uh, call upon our family and friends that we may bless. So we thank you this morning for the opportunity to partner with you uh, to increase or um, establish your covenant here in the earth. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God, amen, amen. Good morning again, my church family, my beautiful family, church family and friends, man. We thank God for you all being here with us today. Um, you guys know that it's a practice of mine just to 
acknowledge you and to thank God for you for being with us. We know now with so many virtual ministries um, all, all, well, throughout the world, really, um, that you being here with us today, it, it really means a lot to us. And we thank God for you. We thank God for all of our family that's here in the sanctuary today. I know that today is a uh, opportunity f- or this weekend really rather this weekend <clears throat> was an opportunity or is an opportunity for many to escape and to go away and since last year no one really had an opportunity to do so this year the doors pretty much uh, has, has opened up somewhat and so we see more people traveling and so uh, we, we have some people that are away today and, and uh, we bless God we pray for their safety while they're away we pray that God will continue to cover them as we talked about the blood of Jesus today, you know that, that that's, a, that's, that's really what we're calling and pleading on, the blood of Jesus to cover our, our, our peeps, you know, our brothers and our sisters while they travel and to watch over them while they travel up and down the highways and byways. So we thank God. And even for you all that are, that are gone and traveling <clears throat> outside of this immediate area, we just want to thank God for you. Again, um, Man, uh, as you heard on the announcements, uh, today is July 4th, and so today we celebrate what they call Independence Day. Amen. Amen. Independence Day. Well, you know, we, we thank God for Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. Uh, happy 4th of July. This is a, what we call this. This is where the nation, this is where they call it the nation's birthday or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's where the nation begins to recognize their day of freedom as a nation, and we the people. <laughs> we the people under one name, under one one God. Amen. I ain't going to mess with that today, but we the people. <laughs> uh, we also just recently we acquired an, another day, amen, that we celebrated a couple of weeks ago called, what, Juneteenth. Juneteenth, amen. We thank God for that. That For those of you who don't know, Juneteenth is another day of, of freedom, or a day of celebration um, uh, of freedom, uh, where um, I believe it was the last slaves in Texas, they didn't know that they were ha- that, that we were free, you know, and so the word got to them, and so we begin to celebrate Juneteenth as a, another uh, a day that we celebrate our freedom. Um, that word had not gotten to them yet, and so uh, they didn't realize that they were free. But regardless of what was documented on paper, we know that many people still aren't free. That even though it was locked, documented on paper, many of us, or many people, I'm not going to say many of us because I'm not part of that. We ain't part of that. We free. Because uh, the Bible says that he who the sun sets free is what? Is free indeed. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. In fact, man, I'm getting ready to go into my word, man. Hold on. Let me pray, man, because I'm, I'm ready to move forward. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's go before the Father. Father, we thank you for this day. This is truly the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives today, Father. But today, God, we set our hearts, and we set our mind, and we set our attention on your voice today. Father, we pray that the voice of a stranger we will not hear, God, but we want to hear your voice today. Father, speak to us. Speak to our hearts, Lord God. Let Allow your word, Father, to be uh, 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 transferred, Father God, from off these pages, God, into the spiritual realm, God, and deposit it, Father, super spiritually, God. Uh, do an operation, God, a spiritual surgery on our hearts, Father, and in, in put your, your word into our lives, Father, into our hearts, Father, that when, we, when we're done hearing your word today, God, that it will be a change, Father, that will take place from the inside out, <laughs> from the inside out, God. For we know that if it happens in the inside, Father God, it shall last. We bless your name today, Father. We thank you for using me today as your vessel. Oh, God, do you, do you, Father, today. Do your will. Do you through me today, Father. I decrease and I pray, God, that you will increase in me, God, and use only of me that, with that, that, that gives you the highest pleasure. We bless you today. We thank you for the people, God, that are hearers today, that are hearing your word. God, I thank you, Father God, for them, Lord God, and I thank you, God, that what you're going to do in their lives today, oh, God, will be a day to, it will make this day a day to remember. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Man, yes, I'm excited. I'm excited about uh, a life and in, in, in what God is doing. We were just, uh, just recently uh, had a chance to share with some people some things that God is doing. 
not only in this ministry, but personally, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, God is really working some things out. We're still waiting on a word, but we, we believe we got a word from the Lord already, but we're waiting on a natural word, you know, to manifest. But we believe God has already sent us a word. Uh, and I'll, I'll just say, hey, amen, I'm going to put it in the atmosphere because faith without works is dead. And then when you believe something, you put it out there in the atmosphere. And when you put it out in the atmosphere, man, that makes it so. And so I'm currently working. Let me see. We live here in Opelika. So it takes me about uh, 55 minutes to get to work, sometimes an hour, depending on the red lights, the traffic, and, you know, and the, the speed. <clears throat> uh, but sometimes, you know, I can get there in about, you know, 50, 51 minutes or whatever. But it's a long commute, nonetheless. Uh, but what God is doing in our lives right now, now, I put in for a position down in Tuskegee. Tuskegee is, uh, what, about 20, 25 minutes away from here? Amen. I, that that t- sounds like it cuts the commute down in half. Amen. So I put in the position and I interviewed a man that did the first interview, which was a, a interview, a video interview. I did an interview with the um, the um, the administrative officer. Uh, she interviewed me and um, gave me a call after the interview and said, hey, uh, the person who you're going to be or not who you're going to be working for. See, I'm still speaking those things to be not as though they are, you know. <laughs> The person that you're going to be working for, she, I don't want to say what she didn't say, but I'm telling you what I believe she said. You hear what I'm saying? So I don't want nobody to say, no, he lied. She didn't say that. I'm telling you what I heard. All right. Now, this is what she said, but this is what I heard. <laughs> and so the person you're going to be working for, he wants to have a, a one-on-one interview with you tomorrow. Are you available tomorrow for him? Because he, he wants to interview you himself. I said, by all means, yes, absolutely. And so we had the next interview the next day with the, uh, and by the way, uh, he, no, nah, I'm not going to go, I can't give you no more details than that. Uh, but uh, but this, this gentleman holds a high position uh, in the position that uh, I, um, uh, that I um, applied for. I'll be working directly for him, traveling with him and, and, and things of that sort, going back and forth to Montgomery, I think like two days a week and being in Tuskegee three days a week. And, um, and so he interviewed me. The interview lasted about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it was a very, very, I would have to say it was a very good interview. Uh, I, I, I walked away with the interview. Again, it was another face-to-face type interview, a video interview. And I walked away, and I believe he walked away highly satisfied with the interview, and he was highly satisfied with the interviewee. Uh, who happened to be me, <laughs> amen, and, and uh, so we are just believe in God. I haven't got the, what they call the official word from man yet, but I believe I already got the official word from God, you know, some time ago, <laughs> yeah. and, and I say all that because the official word came down when God said, I want you all to pack your bags and move to, Be- not Beverly Hills, uh, uh, <laughs> Opelika, <laughs> same, same. <laughs> I was like, Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills, too. <laughs> he said, pack your bags. You moving to Beverly Hills. You moving to Opelika. And so I believe the official word came way back with then when God, even before then, you know, God was like orchestrating, orchestrating our lives. And so this is just a setup. Amen. It's a setup. He's just setting us up. And so I'm believing, and I even feel it in my spirit that this week I'll get the official word for man this week. And so, you know, I, I'm like, man. One of the questions the, uh, the gentleman asked me, he said, uh, well, on your, your resume, it shows that you're, you know, you were, you're living in like in the um, Columbus community. Well, on, my, on my, my resume, I still have my P.O. box, which is in Columbus. The P.O. box is not my living address, my P.O. box. That's where we've had that P.O. box for some time, and so that's on my resume. And so I think that kind of like flew, up, flew a red flag. I said, no, no, sir. So let me tell you, man, I moved, we've been in Opelika for about a year now. I live in Opelika now. <laughs> See, that's all good saying that, man. And so, you know, when I said that, you know, he brightened up again. He was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, you know, all the concerns that he would have had, had I, had, I, had I not listened to God. You know, God just moved all those concerns out of the way. So everything he asked me, man, was in line with my purpose. Talking about purpose. I'm going to be talking about some purpose today a little bit today, man. I'm going to talk about some purpose today. But, man, anyway. So y'all continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Because, as you know, sometimes with the joy of the Lord being my strength, 
Sometimes I think I can fly like an ego. You know, I'd be jumping over men. Uh, what they call that? What Superman do? Jump over buildings? Come on, John. What is it? Jumping up there. Yeah. Stopping locomotive trains, man. You know, that's the joy of the Lord, man. Because sometimes his natural body don't want to participate. <laughs> Paul said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, this flesh is strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we prayed. Amen. We talked a little bit about 4th of July, Independence Day. We talked about that and talked about freedom and talked about, uh, you know, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And as a matter of fact, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 32. In the New Living Translation, John chapter 8, verse 32. So you all heard that today we're going to be doing a, 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 a baptism. We're doing a baptism today, the first baptism of the year, 2021. Praise hey, God. And it says, and you will know the truth, and the what? The truth will do what? It's going to set you free, man. The truth is going to set you free. Let's jump to eight, uh, verse, um, verse 36. Let's see. See what does verse 36 says. Uh, it says, so if the sun sets you what? Free. free you are what? What does that mean, truly free? To me, that's like absolutely free. That means it ain't, it, it ain't, it, it, you know, it ain't like some people coming by and saying, you know, hey, I'm gonna give you a ticket to, a, you know, to, to a game, but uh, you know, just go there. You don't need the ticket. You know, just go there and you go there, and they be like, no, you can't get in without the ticket. You know, I said, man, you told me, yeah, but it wasn't the truth. It wasn't the truth that I, you know, that that you that that that, that I bought, that I paid for you to go to the to this game. I, it wasn't the truth. But Christ said here, he said, no, but this is true. You are truly free. If I set you free, you truly free. And he said, you can bet your bottom dollar that you free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so today we will conduct the very first baptism of the year. Man, we thank God that after service, immediately after service, uh, if you get a chance to, to hang around, and we're going we're gonna to probably just... Uh, I don't know, play some, some music, do some, some things on the screen. We probably just want to maintain our life, you know, while we adjust the camera and everything because we're going to be doing a baptism over here. But our big brother, brother uh, uh, Cordell, a big brother. A big brother Cordell, Jared, man, he has decided today uh, that today is the day that he announces publicly what he had did some time ago privately between him and God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today he's going to announce to the world, man. We're going to put you on camera. I don't know if you knew that. You good with that? Man, come on, man. He said, look, look, he said, I'm ready to tell the world what I've done in private, man. He's going to demonstrate what true freedom truly is. He's going to demonstrate because it's a symbol. Baptism is a symbol. Getting baptized doesn't make you free, but it's a symbol of your freedom. Amen. And it's a symbol of your freedom because I, as I go into the scriptures today, um, we're we going to see some things, uh, how this is a, just a symbol of your freedom. You see, water baptism is a public testimony that we have died to sin and we've died to ourselves. That, that's the hard part. Sometimes we can die to sin, which means we can give up smoking cigarettes. We can give up, you know, fornication. But sometimes it's like dying to ourselves. That's the hard part, man. Giving up of ourselves, man, giving up stuff that we really, 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 truly want that has a hold on us, you know. But what, but, 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 but what baptism is, man, it's just, a, it's just, a, just an outward testimony that we, we've died to, died to our sin, we've died to ourselves, and we're no longer imprisoned. Key word now. We're no longer imprisoned by the tactics and the schemes of Satan or his devices. The Bible says that we ought not to be uh, um, ignorant of Satan's devices. And so we're no longer captive by his devices anymore. We're no longer captive by that. And now we have a life of freedom that we live in Jesus Christ. And so we are demonstrating that, that freedom in Jesus Christ. In fact, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, Paul begins to teach in Romans chapter 6 about this particular freedom. And I want to go into the New Living Translation, and we'll read that in the New Living Translation. Man, I'm excited about today's baptism, man. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Several reasons. Number one, yeah, it's the first one this year, but I'm excited, man, because this brother been waiting a long time to be baptized. And then he was going to try to do it last year, COVID hit, man. And then, you know, he's waiting for his family to get here, man. We thank God for his sisters here today. We thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. 
Thank you for coming to support our big brother. It means so much to him. He didn't want to do it until you got here. It, it meant so much, to, so much to him that you that you were present, and so we thank God for it. And we're going to look at Romans chapter six, verse one. Uh, it, it, I need to read. I think I want to read verse one all the way through eleven. All right, because it, it's all in detail, and so let's read that. You all got some time. If you got to go, I understand. Amen. But you ain't going nowhere because you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and you want to hear what the, what the end's going to be. Yeah, you want to hear what the end's going to be. Romans chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Verse 3 says, Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Then verse 5 goes on and says, Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he is. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Talk about that freedom now. We're no longer slaves to sin. Verse 7 says, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also what? Live with him. Mm. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Never die again. What's that mean? And what does that mean about us? That means we will never die again. Oh, yeah, we're dying natural death. Christ, uh, uh, Paul said this. He said to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And so when we die this natural death, man, most of us ought to be at this point looking forward to getting there. Some of us say, well, I ain't no hurry to get to heaven. I'm no hurry to get to heaven either, but I ain't scared of death either because I know to live is Christ. So I enjoy living here on this earth. I, I enjoy living for Christ. Yeah, living for Christ. I enjoy doing it. But to die for me, it's, it's gain for me. I look forward to that day as well. Man, when I can finally get to a place, man, where I can see Christ all myself, all to myself, man. Man, walk down, what they call them, the streets of gold. Oh, my God, man. Verse 9 says this. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, verse 10, he died once to break the power of sin. But now, not later, but now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves. Who is, who's he talking to? He's talking about us. Yeah. He said, now you should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. We should consider ourselves alive as well. No longer in bondage. No longer captive by, 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 by the grips of sin. And see, what the enemy has done, because we have lived so long captive as a slave or captive as a hostage with Christ, I mean, uh, with, with Satan. You know, sometimes when you, when you live in a certain, uh, even a certain imprisonment, you, you get used to that imprisonment, and that imprisonment becomes your norm. So some of us don't even realize that we're in bondage. Some of us don't even realize that, we've been, we, that we're enslaved to sin. But you won't realize it until you give your life to Christ, and then when you get a taste of freedom, I think it was David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see of his freedom. Christ said this. What is it? Um, uh, Matthew. Oh, man, Lord, thank you. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 in the uh, I, uh, New International Version, NIV. Mm, thank you, Father. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, 
and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogues as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. There it is again, freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, those that, that, that were blinded by the enemy, that couldn't see spiritually. You were blinded by the enemy. You're blinded by the enemy when you begin to live in, in, in captivity and don't realize you're in captivity. You're blinded. The enemy has blinded the minds. The Bible says they blinded the minds. He said you were blinded, but he came to set you. He came to give you sight and to set you free. Verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So God, Christ, so, so Jesus Christ came. He came to do what? To set us free. He came to set us free. Now, baptism today, I'm talking, I want to talk specifically about baptism because I think a lot of people, I, I was at work the other day and I was telling my, my, my supervisor often asks me, you know, what I got planned or what I got going on this particular weekend. And I told myself, well, we're going to have our first baptism this week. He said, oh, wow, your first baptism this week. Uh, and, 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 I, and he said it in a manner as though uh, he said something else which constituted, oh, so this person is going to get saved, you know, by getting baptized. Um, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit helps you to hold your peace. Because I, I wanted to begin to teach him, but the Holy Spirit it, 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 you know, immediately let me know that the knowledge that he was on was going to take more than just me repute, uh, uh, reputing what he said, yeah. refuting what he, what he, what he said. And, and so I'm believing God's going to give me an opportunity maybe after the baptism on when I go back to work, I'll be able to explain to him a little bit more in detail. But at that moment, the Holy Spirit shut my mouth for me not to explain to him that getting baptized does not make you saved. But it also showed and revealed to me what his thoughts were in terms of what baptism was. But it also also revealed to me that he understood what being saved meant, too, in a certain sense, that there is a thing of being saved. Yeah. So he understood that. So I'm, I'm, now I'm realizing, man, I'm that much closer to, to being even a greater witness to him because now I may be able to explain some things to him based on just the, the foundational knowledge he already has. And so sometimes it's good just to keep your mouth shut and listen. You know, and then allow God to speak to you, and then we'll see what's going to happen. Now, I'll tell y'all about the rest of the story because that's, there's more to the story. Uh, I just don't have it all yet, but there's more to the story. Um, but we, we, we were, uh, we as, as children of God, as believers, we were, we were told by Jesus Christ to, to baptize. So this is not something that man, that man made up. This is something that Jesus Christ told us to do. In fact, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, uh, verses not, well, let's begin at verse 19. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 in the New Living Translation. We, we talked about this a couple of Saturdays ago. We talked about this, is, this is called the, the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So Christ gave this as a great commission. We talked about this, as I said, a couple of weeks ago in our outreach meeting. It's a great commission, but in the great commission, he told us, he didn't tell us just go out and spread the gospel just by telling folks, but he said spread the gospel, but also baptize. So baptism was important to Christ. It was so important to Christ that when Christ showed up on the scene while John the Baptist was baptizing, that Jesus Christ told John the Baptist, uh, ba John the Baptist, ba John the Baptist, he told John, John the Baptist to baptize him. Uh, and I think we saw that. Where, 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 where did we see that at? In, 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 was it uh, Luke chapter 4? Let's go there. Y'all know I'm a teacher of the Bible, man. I just like to teach because I don't want anybody to get lost in terms of what's going on because it's, it, 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 when you understand where all this came from, it makes more sense. 
And so I don't want to, I don't dare want to uh, speak ahead of, uh, uh, of, 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 of anyone's basic knowledge of what they already know. Let's go to Matthew chapter, chapter 3, verse 13. Yeah, that's a good place. Uh, in the New Living Translation, it's good. It says, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. To be what? Be baptized by John. Jesus himself came to be baptized by John. Let's see what happens. But John tried to talk him out of it. (laughs) John said, no, 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 no. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? Jesus continued. But Jesus said, it should be done for, for, for we must carry out all that God requires. What does God require? See, God always requires Jesus to do it first, to be that great example. So nobody can refute what it is that we're supposed to do. If Christ did it, then why not us? So, so Christ always sets the, he always sets the standard. He always sets the stage. He always sets where it is that we're supposed to go. Paul said this. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Jesus, and, and, and as Paul follows Christ, we're following Paul. Now, Paul, Jesus is saying, well, let me set the example. You guys follow what I do. So as he taught the disciples, he set the standard for the disciples. And it says, uh, 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 so John agreed to, to baptize, to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. My God, who brings me great joy. So this is something that was ordained by God, done by Jesus, and set a a, a precedence, a precedence with a C, sets a precedence for what we're supposed to do. And so that's why Christ didn't have a problem in, in Matthew chapter 28 saying, now you go out and do what I just did. You go out and do and do exactly what I've taught you to do. And so baptism is something that it just didn't come up because, of, because it was a thought of John the Baptist. It, it was something that was done and, and, and it was done that each and every one of us would follow suit. Let me put out a disclaimer that, that baptism is not just for anybody. It's for the believers. What is a believer? A believer is someone who has given their life to Jesus Christ. Now, so you just can't come out and say, because some people, you know, they go to church, and because they see other people get baptized, they never gave their life to Christ, but they want to be baptized because it seems like it's a religious thing to do. And many people have gotten baptized because they believe it's the religious thing to do. And being baptized is what? What saved them. No, 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 no. Being baptized is not what saved you. As a matter of fact, um, there are many people that believe um, just being baptized is, is, is like a, a, a um, it's almost like I think we had a conversation with, with um, someone some time ago where they thought that, that um, uh, rededication was the same as baptism. And it's not. It's not. And so baptism and what we do here in terms of baptism, we do exactly. We, ain't got the, we don't have the Jordan River here. But we got something close to it. <laughs> and, and what we're going to do is we're going gonna to take our, our brother today and we're going to submerge him in water. Man, his whole body going under. Because they didn't, they didn't just, when they, when, they put, when they put Christ in the grave, they didn't just put part of his body in the grave. His entire body went into a tomb. Right? And so baptism, when we do this baptism, it symbolizes, as I read in Peter, it symbolizes where he's going down. And, and being, uh, being, being crucified with Christ, being buried with Christ. So his whole body, we're going to submerge him. Hold your breath, bro, because I may, you know, walk away just to see how long you can hold your breath, man. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. <laughs> man. And so it's for the believers. It's, baptism is only, it's, it, it's, it's only for those who have received Christ as their Savior. It is not for the unbeliever. All the accounts in Scripture have believers being baptized. Whenever you looked at being, those that, that were baptized, it, it, it was all those that, that are believers, those that have given their life to Christ. An unbeliever who is baptized does not receive anything from the Lord. 
Anyone who has been baptized but have not given their life to Christ have not gotten anything from the Lord. You're not saved. And you can't, you, 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 you being baptized and then coming back and saying 10 years later, well, I want to get saved now, that's fine. That's dandy if, the, if grace does abound. But I would commend that, that you give your life to Christ first. And really, that's easier than getting baptized. And let me also put a disclaimer out there. Getting baptized is not a requirement to get into heaven. Christ recommend that we do it. He asks us to do it. But if some people may die and never get a chance to get baptized, that's not going to prevent you from getting into heaven. Because what gets you into heaven is your confession of that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That's what gets you into heaven. Let's go to Romans. Oh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is just speaking to me. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That's it, Brother John. Come on, man. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 in the King James Version. It said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. I don't read baptism in this. Some people may say, well, you got to get baptized to get saved. What Bible are you reading? My Bible tells me that if I confess Jesus with my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ, that, that God raised him from the dead, I'm going to be saved. Next verse. For with the heart, man believe unto righteousness. With the heart. See, if salvation begins in the heart. It doesn't begin in the hand. Some people think you can do all that you can and you work your way into heaven. I'm going to be busy, man. I'm going to be a busy body. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And your works is going to get you into heaven. No, man. He said, with the heart, man, believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation, man. Salvation. My mouth, man, is made into salvation. You, you got to speak it. And that's what brother is doing today, man. He's making a, 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 man, he's making a confession of his faith today through his demonstration of being baptized. It's a profession. It's a, he, he's, he's confessing it. He's confessing. So, so baptism is for the believers only. Let's go to Galatians chapter, chapter 3, verse 26. Uh, in the New Lemon Translation, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. We'll read through verse 29. It says, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Come on now. See, when you, when you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, you, you're putting him on. Yes. You're putting him on. You begin to wear him. Amen. It says it's like putting on new clothes. I don't know, man. Last time y'all got some new clothes, man. But, man, new clothes make you feel new. It doesn't make you feel good, man. Got that fresh smell to it. You know what I'm saying? You know how you get in a new car and you get in a car and you're like, man, this car smells like brand new. New clothes do the same thing, man. Just make you feel good about yourself. Sometimes you get the new clothes, man, you don't even want to put them in the dry cleaners, man. You want to wear them things out, man. Got, well, that ain't y'all. Oh, I'm sorry, man. That's, I'm talking about, talking about some other folk I know. Getting them new clothes. He says, like, putting on new clothes, continue. There's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the what? The true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham, but, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. My God, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Um, what, what, what was it? Is it is it first second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17? <laughs> uh, in the King James Version, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this. Most of you know this one by heart. It said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. Are become new. It's like putting on new clothes, man. When you give your life to Christ, man, it's like putting on, it's a refreshing. It's a good feeling, but it's not just a feeling that we receive, though. 
It's more, I don't want to get anybody, I don't want to confuse you. It's not just about the feeling. It's about a knowing in here. It's a knowing. You know, you, you have knowledge of it now, man. I've been changed. I've been changed, man. Something, something is happening inside of me. I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I've been changed. And, 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 and you, though you begin to feel it, it's, 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 the, it's the, acknowledge, the acknowledgement of it that brings about the feeling. I know I've been changed. Let me also give you a, 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 a disclaimer that getting baptized does not add to your salvation. It does not add to your salvation. Baptism does not add to a person's salvation. A person is saved by trusting Christ. Baptism does not make a person saved. It is also wrong to think that a person is not saved until they are baptized. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We pretty much touched on this already. But that's what the whole, And the Holy Spirit is just speaking to me. Uh, but I got another scripture here, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, in the New Living Translation. Christ said, I mean, this is Paul, and Paul was talking to the Corinthians, and he said, he said, look, he said, hey, hey, he said, for Christ didn't send me to baptize. He said, I'm not coming to, just to baptize. He didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. What Paul is saying is he's not saying that I'm not going to baptize you. I'm not, I'm not, not going to do what Christ told us to do in the Great Commission. He said, but my, but my priority is to, is to preach Christ being crucified, not to uh, preach baptism. He said, let me set the priority. Let me, let me set the priorities in order first. Let's not put the cart before the horse. He said, my, I come to preach Christ and him being crucified. He said, somebody else may come and, and, and baptize you, he said, but I'm here, to, I'm here to make sure that you get salvation first. Remember, I, I said that. I said, getting baptized doesn't get you into heaven. Confessing Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is what get you into heaven. And Paul said, that's my priority. I want to get you, to, I want to get you into heaven. Mm. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 in the New Living Translation. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read a few scriptures in that one. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, it says, but God is so rich in, in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. God's grace that we've been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms uh, because we are united with Christ Jesus. Verse 7 says, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us. As shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Verse 8, God saved you by his what? By his grace. When you did what? When you believed. <laughs> he saved us by his grace when we believed, when we believed. And you can't take credit for this. You can't do it. You can't take credit for it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. You can't work your way into heaven. You can get baptized a hundred times. That ain't going to get you into heaven. So none of us can boast about it. Verse 10, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the things he planned for us long ago. See, Christ planned some things for us long ago. He planned some things for you, Cordell, long ago. He knew this day was going to come. And he planned some things for you long ago, long ago, my brother. We are saved the moment we give our lives to Christ, the moment we trust Christ, the moment we trust God and believe who Christ is and we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. That's when we're saved. Baptism doesn't make us saved, but it is, it is something that God has instructed each and every one of us to do. 
Because it is, again, it is a public demonstration of what has happened privately between you and Christ. Between you and your private, your, your, your private confession and your, 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 your private relationship, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I don't believe that there should be no, what do you call it, a 007 Christians. <laughs> Some of y'all may be too, too, too young for 007. But there's no, there, should not, there shouldn't be any 007 Christians, man. There shouldn't be no secret agent Christians. I'm, I'm only going to be a Christian when, when, when it's comfortable or when it's convenient amongst those that know I'm saved. But when I walk out of these doors, I'm a 007 Christian. Look out, y'all. 007 Christian. No, man, God wants you to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and then he wants you to show, do it outwardly. Because he also said this. He said, he that are, that's ashamed of me, man, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. His father's in God. His, his father God. He's talking about God himself. He said, if you're ashamed of me, if you're ashamed to demonstrate, to do what, I, what I've done, you're ashamed to do what I've done? He said, I'm ashamed, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And then when we get there, those not, and I was talking about those that, 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 that gold paved road and the pearly gates, and when we get there and we think, oh, man, we made it. Christ said, I know you not. I said, no, no, I don't know you. Are you, you, you? Wait a minute, I do know you. You're the one that was ashamed of me. You was the one that couldn't confess me as your Lord and Savior. No, yeah, I, I know you. <laughs> but I also know that you don't belong here. You don't belong here. Being baptized is, again, it's a symbolism that is not to be taken lightly. It's something that God, Jesus Christ, he admonished us to do. Baptism in water symbolizes burial with Christ. It symbolizes the burial with Christ. But it also symbolizes the rising of Christ. The, you, you rising up a new man, a new woman. You rising, you rising up as a new person in Christ. You rising up, and, and, and though old things are passed away, behold, all things become new again. And no, I'm not going to try to tell you that old, that everything that you were doing before you got wet is gone and stayed there in the water. No, the only thing that may have stayed there in the water was maybe some of the dirt that was on your body before we went down in there. But some of the things, some of that sin that was still that's embedded in your heart, that that sin's got to be worked out. It's got to be worked out. And the only way to work that thing out, see, Christ said this, my God. Paul, when he began to baptize, he said that, that when you get baptized, not only will you get baptized, he said, but you too shall receive this power or the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, that, that should accompany what happens with you. That the, 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 the endowment of the Holy Spirit has to come in. And that's when the chains begin to take place. That inner thing, that inner change begin to happen in your life. And so not only do you just need the water, but you need the, you need the Holy Spirit, the, the holy water. You need to drink from the well that never runs dry. You need to drink from that well that never runs dry. That water. The, the woman at the well says, uh, says uh, 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 Christ was saying, give, give me some water. And, 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 and the woman began to ask him, why, 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 why should I be giving you water? Uh, you, and Christ said, if you knew who it was who was asking you to bring me water. He said, if you only knew who was, who was telling you to bring me some water. He began to tell her that he was a well that never runs dry, man. So I commend you, my brother, today. I commend Brother Jared, man. He's getting, he's getting uh, baptized today. But I wanted to teach baptism because I wanted to also give anybody else an opportunity. If there's anybody else in this room who wants to be baptized today, you can do that today. We're prepared to have you baptized today. You don't have to be the only one today. And if you're thinking about it, guess what? You're going to see the demonstration of it being done today. And as a demonstration of it being done today, you can go ahead and get on the list for tomorrow. I'll get on the list for next Sunday. Get on the list. I will tell you this, though, that God's grace, yes, God's grace is sufficient. But I never know. I, I don't know personally how long his grace will last in your life. I, I know that his grace in my life is going to last until, until, until I reside with him in heaven because I've made it my mind. As for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to give God all we have. And, so, and as long as I'm giving God all I have, man, his grace is going to always be sufficient in my life. But I can't say that for you. I can't say that for each and every one of you that are here that's out there. 
that, that's between you and the Father. But I would not take for granted that you'll be here tomorrow or next week to be baptized or next year to be baptized. I wouldn't take that for granted. I wouldn't take it lightly. I wouldn't take it lightly. I wouldn't take it lightly. If you have trusted Christ as your Savior, then you should be baptized. While this, while this act in and of itself will not save you, it will be done as an outward sign of an inward change. An outward sign of an inward change. It begins there. It begins with you taking a bold step of what it is that you believe you're called to do. Now, I'm going to be teaching in the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to be talking about purpose. I'm going to be talking about purpose. You say, I said, we, hey, we're the greatest church of Alabama, man. We're loving God, loving people, and doing what? Pursuing purpose. I'm going to teach you how to love God. I'm going to teach you how to love people, but I also have a responsibility to teach you how to find your purpose. This today is, a, is an example of, of, of the beginning of knowing your purpose. Because you can't know your purpose if you don't know your creator. You, you don't, you, you, I mean, a lot of times we're always talking about, you know, man, what, a, what do I want to be? What do I want to do? Man, what is it, man, I feel like doing? You, you, you never tap into your purpose as long as you're talking to yourself. You got to talk to your creator and say, God, what was, I, what, what was I born here to do? And the first step in knowing your purpose is giving your life to Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I'm done right now, man. I'm done with that message. Praise the Lord. Yes and amen. Look, we're going to be baptized in about, I'm a, I think we're going to be ready. We might be ready in about, let's, let's say, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. That gives us 30 minutes of prayer. So I want you all to stay tuned. Uh, we, we're just going to be playing some music. Let's just continue to keep it live. Uh, but we turn. maybe we can just uh, show some uh, video and just play some music. We can do that. Now, could, will the audio still be, be on? So what you suggest, First Lady? What should we do? Just come back? Okay, First Lady said, you know, I listen to the First Lady when she's right. <laughs> hey, we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna, to... I'm going to give a, a, a word for those that want to give their life to Christ. I'm going to give a, 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 um, an opportunity for you to get saved. But, but after that, we're, we're going to pause and break, and then we'll be back at 1 o'clock. Now, for any of you that are out there that want to give your life to Christ, you've never given your life to Christ before, and you want to get saved, uh, I, you may not be in a facility where you can be baptized, but you are in a place where you can get saved. You can give your life to Christ right where you are, whether you're driving, whether you're in a park, whether or not you're in a hospital. Regardless of where you are, confession is made with the mouth and it's believed out of the heart. Now, some of you may be out there, you may be watching, you may not be able to speak. Don't you know God is wise enough, enough to know the, 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 the thoughts and the intent of your heart? That if you can't speak, physically can't speak, but he realizes that your heart, because God hears our heart when we, we, our heart talks. Our heart speaks to God. So he knows our heart. And so that's you. If you want to you confess this out of your heart, man, you want to confess it out of your heart and believe it out of your heart, you can do that today too. For those of you that want to rededicate your life to Christ today, you can do that today. I have a simple prayer. It's just a prayer that, that kind of like opens the door of communication between you and, and, and Jesus Christ. It's a door uh, of communication where... I'll get you started, but you have to finish it. You have to finish it by uh, continue, the continuing the conversation. <laughs> That's what I like to say. You continue the conversation. Keep talking to him, uh, but don't out-talk him. Take the time out and listen to what he has to say in return. For those of you who want to give your life to Christ, say this prayer with me. Father God, you know my life, and you know how I've lived it. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross. And on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands. That power is what saves me. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We bless you all. Anybody out there that done that?
Man, we praise the Lord for that. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you so much for that confession, man. If you've gotten saved, we want to hear about it, man. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on our, on our, our um, uh, what pages we got, all those pages we got. Hit us up. We want to know. We want to hear a testimony of what God is doing in your lives. We love you guys so much. And until the next time, man, you guys continue to join in with us. If you can't, come back with us for the baptism. I want you to at least join us on Wednesday night Bible study. First lady mentioned to you that I've been doing some in-depth teaching about God and, and giving and, and just the practicalities of us living a good life. And so um, I want you to tune in with us. It's Bible study Wednesday nights, 6.30 Central Standard Time, 7.30 for you all on the East Coast. Uh, we love you guys so much, man. And for those that are here and for those of you who are out there, let me speak a word of benediction in case you don't have an opportunity to return. Father, I pray that you will bless these, your people. God, until we meet again, God, continue to keep them with all peace, Father God, that, that occupies their entire life, God. Not as the world gives it to them, but all, as only you can give, them to, give, them, give it to them. Father, thank you for the peace of God, Father God, that passes all understanding. God, I pray now for health, God. I pray for wealth, God. I pray, God, for that their commitment will continue to be uh, sure, God, that they will not waver in their faith, but, God, that they will continue to give you the very best that they have. God, I pray that you will continue to operate in their lives. God, direct their paths. I thank you for the favor of God that's upon their lives. God, the favor that goes before them, that opens doors, God, that no man can open, and that closes doors, God, that no man, God, Father God, will have the ability to open up. God, we thank you, Father God, for the will that's being done in your people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, saints, friends, brothers and sisters, I love you guys so much. Look here, we'll be back in about 30 minutes. But for those of you that, that cannot come back with us, look here, I'm Pastor T. I'm here at the Bridge Church of Alabama where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Man, we're doing it, we're doing it, and we're doing it God's way. Why? Because God's way is the only way. It's the right way. And that's the only way we know how to do it. We love you guys, and until the next time, I'm Pastor T. I'm out. God bless you.